Google recently launched the Agent to Agent Protocol, or A2A for short. It's an open standard for AI agents to communicate with each other across different platforms and vendors. Why does this matter? Right now, AI agents are mostly isolated. Your ChatGPT agent can't talk to your Notion agent. Your custom AI agent can't collaborate with specialized agents from other companies. But the future of AI isn't single agents working alone. It's multi-agent systems where specialized agents collaborate to solve complex problems. Think about launching a marketing campaign. You'd want your AI agent to handle the entire process. It needs one specialized agent to research your audience and competitors, another to generate ad copy and visuals, another to set up campaigns across platforms, and maybe another to track performance and optimize based on the results. Today, you need to manually coordinate all of those tools. But with A2A, these agents can discover each other, communicate securely, and work together automatically. Here's how A2A works. Agents advertise their capabilities using something called an agent card. It's a JSON document that describes what the agent can do. When a client agent needs help, it discovers remote agents that have the right capabilities. They then communicate through standardized task objects. The protocol handles everything from quick responses to long running tasks that might take hours or days. It supports real-time updates, different content types, and even audio and video. Something that makes A2A special is that it's built on existing web standards. HTTP, service and events. This means it all integrates easily with current systems. It's also secure by default with enterprise grade authentication that matches OpenAI standards and it complements Anthropic's model context protocol. While MCP gives agents tools and context, A2A lets them talk to each other. The standard has a lot of backing. Over 50 partners, including companies like Atlassian, Box, Cohere, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and major consulting firms like Accenture, BCG, and McKinsey. Their official SDK is available for Python, .NET, Java, and TypeScript, which as you'll see, make it very easy to get started building. A2A isn't just about making agents chat. It's about creating an interoperable ecosystem where the best agent for each job can be discovered and utilized, regardless of who built it or where it's hosted. Now that we know what A2A is, let's start writing some code. To get started, I'm here in my terminal where I have a basic TypeScript project set up with a client and a server folder. The only thing I really have set up right now are the TypeScript setup as well as the dependencies. And if you go to the agent to agent JavaScript um, documentation, it's going to essentially walk you through the dependencies. So all you would need to do is install the dependencies and um, that's kind of where we're gonna be starting off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement this Hello World agent. And the Hello World agent consists of a client and a server. So we're gonna have the server running the actual implementation of A2A, and then we're gonna be interacting with it from the client using the specification, uh, meaning that we're kind of gonna be passing in the proper arguments for this all to work. And then we're gonna expand this outside of just a hello world, because this is a very basic example where it's just kind of responding with a message. And what we'd like to do would be to kind of add this task support. This is really where you kind of get a lot of the power from A2A. And then I'm gonna take that in a little bit further and we're gonna add a special like type of agent for getting movie information that I've already implemented in another code base to kind of go from basic to adding the task to something more like realistic. So to kind of get started, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by just copying this server code. And what I'm gonna do is go into my code base here. You see we have the client and the server folder. I'll open the server and I'm just gonna paste this here. Now you're gonna see maybe there's gonna be some minor things we need to fix. For instance, this um, hello agent card is expecting this agent card type, which is missing a couple of things, which are capabilities, default, um, input modes and default output modes, which my autocomplete, thankfully, just went ahead and completed for me. So with that, we should be in pretty good shape. So we'll go ahead and walk through here. Um, this is what we were talking about in the introduction, the agent card. This is what essentially explains what the um, agent does. So this is kind of what becomes discoverable. And I'm giving it, um, or the documentation is giving a name, hello, hello agent, the description, um, the version, and it's kind of giving the skills. So the skills is very basic, it's just hello world, and it doesn't really have any capabilities. Um, so what's gonna happen is we're going to have this argument come in, come in of a request context, and what we wanna do is just log this out. And this way we can kind of see the information that's coming in from the client, because right now we're not really doing anything with it, we're just um, in the, in the 
current documentation that we're going through now just basically responds no matter what, but we wanna go ahead and log this out so we can actually see what's coming in. So that's the server. And then you'll see that we have this event bus that publishes the, um, the message and then kind of calls this finished function. Next on the client, we're gonna go ahead and open up client.ts and we're gonna go down here to client and we'll copy and paste the client here. And what we want to do is just maybe just get rid of this here so we don't have this syntax error in our text editor. And then what I'll probably do is just go ahead and say fix this in chat because I think we need to check that that exists before we go forward with uh, logging it out. All right, so we fixed that. And um, let's see what's going on here. So we're basically passing in this, this send params object to the server, which is located at localhost 4000. And here we can say, we can look for our port where we're kind of setting it localhost 4000. And um, right here we are console.logging the request context, which should include uh, this send params object. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So here on the server, I'll go ahead and run npm run dev. And on the client, I'll run npm run dev. Oh, it looks like we need to actually do one thing. Instead of saying await, we're just gonna run. All right, looks like everything is working. We have the agent response, hello world. And here we have the server request context where you have the message ID, role, parts, where you have hi there. And if we run this again with a different, different message, we'll see that it comes through here. All right, so all that's working. So that's the very basic kind of like hello world. But really again, where a lot of this becomes more powerful is when we start adding the task support. So let's take a look at that. And this is kind of where you have more real world long running tasks, because typically when you call some API, it isn't synchronous, it's typically async, right? You're hitting a database, you're calling an API, you're doing a, some type of inference. There's all types of stuff you're doing. And this is a way for us to kind of uh, manage that flow. So what you can do is like do things like cancel the task. You can do things like get the status of the task. Um, you can do things like get the final, like, you know, uh, publish the final uh, status update after all the work has been done. So this is kind of a way to kind of manage all that stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and import um, this from A2A SDK on the server. And then we're gonna replace the hello executor with this task executor. So go ahead and copy this. Paste it there. And instead of saying new hello executor, we'll say new task executor. I'll save that. Looks like it's compiling okay. And now we're gonna go to the client. And we'll update our imports. We'll update this client. Actually, we'll go ahead and do this one at a time. We'll change this. I think this might be the exact same actually, yep. Um, we'll go ahead and copy this response. And it looks like instead of like defining the params, we're just passing them in directly there. And then we'll throw this logic in there as well. And it looks like we're still getting these little syntax errors. So I'll go ahead and try to fix those. All right, so we fixed our syntax errors. Um, so 
What we're gonna now do is actually more of a task-based A2A setup where we have this initial task, which is submitted. We have the update, which is kind of where the actual like response that we'll be worrying about comes from. This would kind of be where you do your work, I would say. And then that's kind of about it. So here, what we're passing in is this object here where we're passing in a message ID, a role, parts, text, and the text is do something. So again, what we might want to do would be to log out this request context. And that way we can kind of see what's coming in. All right, so I'm just gonna restart the client. And here we go, uh, here we have the, the value being logged there and then the, the, the response is this, this is the analysis for. So if we go to our server, we can kind of see that we're responding with that there. So this is kind of really, really basic stuff. This isn't anything I would say is too real world, but it is so nice to be able to just get up and running this quickly. So let's create now a movie agent that actually does something interesting. Our movie agents should be able to only uh, take information about movies and give you very, very high quality responses. Now there's a few ways you could build this, right? You could use like some movie database. Um, you could use a proprietary uh, API that you run that kind of does a bunch of interesting stuff, or you can just build a really, really nice prompt, right? The prompt could be something that you spend a lot of time figuring out. And if you kind of look at Claude Code, Claude Code is something like that. Uh, it's a 2,800 or 3,000 line prompt that just works really well. And a lot of the value in some AI APIs has to do with the prompt, right? So our um, AI movie um, agent is just gonna be a really, really nice prompt. And that way we can kind of do something pretty simple and we're gonna use the open AI um, API. I'm sorry, we're gonna use the Anthropic API to call uh, an inference service using that prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that uh, project in my editor now and we'll get working on it and uh, kind of test it out. All right, so I'm in the movie uh, code base for our movie agent and I'm also having it open here in my um, terminal where we also have a very similar setup where we have a client and a server. So I'm gonna go ahead and change into the server and change into the clients. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk through this agent card. So the agent card is called a uh, movie agent card. It says it's an agent that can answer questions about movies and actors. And it has like these skills so you can tell me about the plot of a movie or recommend good movies or whatever. And what we're actually doing is we're going to go combine a really nice prompt with a call to an LLM. So the LLM call is happening like right here where we have this environment variable for our Anthropic API key. Um, we're gonna combine the base prompt with the message text. The message text is what's gonna be passing it, passing it on the client. And the base prompt is gonna be this base prompt right here. Um, you are a specialized movie agent, blah, blah, blah. You can kind of read the, through this if you want, but it's kind of just our proprietary you know, um, prompt for our agent. And pretty simple stuff after this. We're just gonna call the Anthropic API with the text combined with the base prompt and give the user a response. And if the user tries to pass in something that isn't a movie request, then we should return a message saying this is only for movies. So how do we do that? We're gonna go to our client and we're gonna say, uh, try out two different prompts. The first is gonna be who is Sydney Sweeney? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say npm run dev on the server. And now we run npm run dev on the client. We should see that the user message content who is Sydney Sweeney is passed in. And then down here on the server, we're gonna go ahead and call the Anthropic API and now we get the response about Sydney Sweeney. To really test this out, let's ask our AI prompts, our AI agent, what is the capital of France? And this should say, basically you can't do that. And that's what it says. So our response is I'm a specialized movie AI assistant. I can only discuss topics related to films, actors, directors, and the entertainment industry. All right. So that wraps it up. All of the code that we just went over is gonna be available in the comments here. It's all open source. 
I definitely recommend um, diving into a lot of this A2A spec and experimenting with it and building stuff with it because I think there's just a lot of potential here and it also is just like another tool in your tool belt if you're um, building in the AI space in general. So thanks for checking out the video. Um, please consider sharing it if you liked it and like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. And I'll be back with another video in the next couple of weeks. Thanks.